Well, let me bring in uh, Nelson Ross and Dafia McPo on this matter. Being a member of parliament who is a direct stakeholder in this matter, this is the decision of the Supreme Court essentially dismissing the application by the speaker. And I want us to hear the matter on the merit, the, the, the merits of the issue that the speaker brought before the court. This is what the decision of the court was, and I'll bring you on this point. Let's, let's take a listen. We have the application and find that the grounds supporting the application have no merit because of the very explicit and clear directions of the 1992 Constitution, specifically Article 2, Article 130 and Article 296 and established decisions of the Supreme Court from decades of the country's constitutional history. Uh, Dr. Mpo, that's the verdict of the court. To, to what the verdict regarding what exactly? That's basically the application by the speaker, essentially. You see, we, we need to understand how parliament works. It appears that even the Supreme Court itself does not understand how Parliament functions. Why do you say that? Because if they if they have some appreciation of how Parliament functions in issuing even the stay of execution order, they would have directed it to certain specific officers of Parliament, i.e., the Speaker, i.e., the Marshal, i.e the clerk to parliament hmm. because <laughs> this matter let me let, let me reference article 95 of the constitution it says 95 one there shall be a speaker of parliament who shall be elected by the members of parliament from among persons who are members of parliament or who are qualified to be elected as members of parliament. Two, the sister provision in 97, here it goes, under 95. 95 two says, the speaker shall vacate his office. A, if he becomes a minister of state or a deputy minister. Do you, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or, if he resigns from office by, write, by writing, signed by him, and addressed to the clerk to parliament. Or, if any circumstances arise that if he were not speaker, would disqualify him for election as member of parliament. Or D, if he is removed from office by a resolution of parliament, supported by the votes of no less than three quarters of all members of parliament. If you go to 97, mm -hmm. 97 borrows this same similar language in respect of an office of a member of parliament. It says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Then it gives the, the in indications. Now, what exactly is an issue here? What, what were the facts placed before the Supreme Court in this matter? Is the MPP saying, that Cynthia Morrison hasn't filed as an independent candidate in Aguna West? Is that what they went to tell the Supreme Court? Did the MPP tell the Supreme Court that Kojua Samoa did not file as an independent candidate? Kojua Sante. Yeah. Kojua Sante. They didn't file as an independent candidate in Suhum. Was that the facts that the MPP brought before the court? Or that the, independent, the current independent member of parliament for formula has not joined them the mpp so much so that they have presented him and sponsored him as a member of the party under their logo under their symbol pursuant to regulation 14 of ci 127 for which notices of poll have been issued to that effect are those the facts that the mpp presented before the court so, what exactly is the Supreme Court trying to adjudicate? That these things have not happened? So, the pronouncement by speaker should be stayed? It has taken effect. 
So if there's a certain state order, it will take parliament to take that decision to reverse the effect of the speaker's pronouncement. Parliament hasn't made those decisions. No resolution has been passed yet. Because the day that that resolution could have been passed, we lack Kuru to take that decision. So we are just in it here. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard Bobby say that the matter that went before the court was not political. Who says so? Mm -mm. Senior. Okay. I said mm. it may have political implications. No. But we don't <laughs> expect the Supreme Court it's, to it's, wear political that, it was hats. Not that it has political <laughs> implications. Dafenyo Maki himself, mm -hmm. now the minority leader, who deposed to Daffy David. Now the minority leader. Ah, he is. <laughs> no, he, well, ah, he's the leader of the MPP. No. Course. No. Okay, he says MPP caucus. No. 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 Let's not describe him as the minority leader. leader. Yes, yes, everybody yes, everybody yes, should calm down. Yes. No, I am no. speaking to his own affidavit. So let me quote his own affidavit. Okay. If you go to paragraph, and, and permit me, because it will set the tone for this matter. Paragraph 8 of his affidavit, subparagraph 2, mm -hmm. he starts by this way that the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament deprives the four constituencies represented by these four ousted members of Parliament their constitutional right of representation in Parliament. Because from the date of the said ruling up to the date of dissolution of the 8th Parliament of the 4th Republic in the midnight of 6 January 2025, is a period of less than three months. By the express provision of Article 1126 of the Constitution, 1992 Constitution, a by-election shall not be held within three months before the holding of a general election. Thus, the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament smacks off a coup cool d'etat. Mm -hmm. Speaker, the Supreme Court couldn't strike down this, this affidavit. They went to court to say that Speaker committed a coup d'etat in Parliament. The Supreme Court adopted this affidavit and acted on it. Mm -hmm. That one, it wasn't scandalous. Mm -hmm. To go to court and say that Speaker's decision amounted to a coup d'etat. The Supreme Court accepted this language. In an affidavit. You are reading from that, the affidavit. Yes. And I'm referencing you paragraph 8, sub 2 of Apeno Marking's affidavit in support of the ex parte application. And that smacks off a coup d'etat against the four affected constituencies to deny them lawful representation in the National Assembly. Three. He continues. Three. That in the absence of any by election between the date of the ruling of the speaker of parliament that is 7th 17th october 2024 and the dissolution of the eighth parliament of the fourth republic ghanaian citizens listen no ghanaian citizens residing in these four constituencies do not have the right of of re-electing anyone to replace these four ousted members of parliament this makes the said ruling of the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, this, let me, because I'm reading from. This makes the said ruling of the Speaker of Parliament an irreparable damage and excessively harsh if the said ruling is not stayed by this honorable court. Mm. You, you, you are listening to the terms of the affidavit in right. support. Pure politics. Four, this is where it comes, that the balance of convenience will tilt against the plaintiff applicant and the new patriotic party, the party in government as the minority party takes over as majority party in, in parliament. This will thwart government business and by so doing, make the country economically difficult in order to make in order to make the government of the day unpopular in an election year to score political points mm -hmm. attached here to and marked as sbc is the weekly business agenda of parliament for the week ending 18th october and all that yes now the rest are about fidelity so i'll leave it mm -hmm. v885 Paragraph 8, sub 5. That the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament, if made to stand, 
could plant the country into mayhem and chaos as unnecessary parliamentary inquiries. Listen, no, as unnecessary parliamentary inquiries likely to be raised by the new majority party. Are you listening? Mm, yes. By the new majority party in parliament could bring government business to a halt and lead the country into civil disobedience, public demonstrations aimed at. I see. So the NDC was described as the new majority party. Thank you. In so, the affidavit. So before the Supreme Court, before the Supreme Court had this ex parte application, they knew that it is the NDC that is in the majority in parliament. I see. That is, those, these were the facts placed before the court. So for anybody to say that what the court engaged in was not politics, then it leaves much to be desired. The court knew exactly what they were asked to do. Look, to file a process at 12.40 p.m. at the Supreme Court registry on a Friday afternoon, forget it. <laughs> ah, you may not, you, the registrar may not even be available. Yeah. Friday afternoon. Supreme Court. Do you know how the Supreme Court registry works? But to file a process at 12.40 p.m. and by 2 p.m., the court has given a decision. Are they started sitting at 2? No. Yeah. If you read the proceedings, by 2 p.m., the decision has been given. So from the time of filing, the, unprecedented. the alacrity and the speed is mind-blowing. <laughs> Even the circumstances under which the registrar was able to inform the chief justice that an innocuous ex parte application has been filed that deserves her attention, for which five Supreme, four Supreme Court judges will be summoned and paneled, including the CJ herself, five. And they will hear the matter expressly and determine it within one hour. Oh, my brother. We are all officers of the court. We know how the registries work. A, 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 this, this appears well organized. Well, the CJ's position is that this is a constitutional matter, not a political matter. I am saying I, this is a political matter. Yes. I have just read affidavit in support of the application to you. So don't listen to what people say. Look at the documents that they considered. The CJ herself is also subject to the Constitution. The Supreme Court itself is also subject to the Constitution. Parliament is also subject to the Constitution. Are you aware there are constitutional provisions that Parliament can cite people for contempt of Parliament? Contempt when of you parliament. impede, when by your actions you impede the work of Parliament. So with what the Supreme Court has so, done, is it a contempt so, of Parliament? So Parliament should also cite the Register of the Supreme Court, cite the applicant, the minority leader, cite the Supreme Court judges for impeding its work. You think that will have peace in this country? Maybe Parliament should do that. That their action con uh, amount yes, to contempt of Parliament. Uh, why? That, that, that is what the applicant is saying. The person who is moving the motion on the floor of Parliament says that by the conduct of these persons, their actions seek to impede Parliament from conducting its constitutional functions. And so they should be referred to the Privileges Committee. And let's see how things play out. So you see, the spirit and the letter of the 1992 constitution engenders that these three organs of state are co-equal. They must peacefully coexist. The Supreme Court is not the supervisor of parliament. With all due respect, it is not. It is not. I'm a lawyer and I know exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It is not. So the Supreme Court, some, some pronouncements, CJ will hold a press conference and, and say things that not even the president or the vice president can disobey. Yes, we know. But when a court order is disobeyed, we know the processes. Should it take the CJ to be issuing those threats that not even the president or the, the vice can disobey the orders of the court? Yes, we know. But orders of the court are disobeyed by every ordinary people. You go to court, you get an injunction, people continue to build. Nothing happens. If indeed, you see, it is not the speaker 
it appears that the CJ is looking at the speaker like an individual. Speaker is an is a backman is the occupant of the speaker's office as we speak. Mm -hmm. So, so her choice of words in addressing Speaker Bagman leaves much number to be desired. Two, number two or number three? It's number three. Number, number three. three. Okay, okay. You understand? <laughs> you you are addressing. Oh, but practically, he's number two. Okay. Yeah, yes. You you are addressing the uh, an, another organ of state. So when you are addressing another organ of state. There must be some decorum. You, you understand? Look, we are supposed to coexist. Not to interject, but this line, um, I don't remember the CJ, or you are referring to her, her words in the ruling. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so if the speaker no. chooses. This is right, the speaker. No, no, let, let, I was Hold there. On. Please. Mm -hmm. So, please, please. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Please. Please. No, but no, but he has a right to interrupt. 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 He has a right to He was talking down under the arm of government. Please. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. Gentlemen, hold on. He was talking down under the arm of government. Hold on. Please. Hold on. What is the point of issue that you raised. I am no, no, I'm, I'm uh, no, the uh, Bobby Bonson. The wait, 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 wait. I just want I, to I, hear I him. Gentlemen, uh, yes. Sorry. There was an issue that was raised in the application as to whether or not the orders or the rulings that were given by the speaker was even subject to the Supreme Court's intervention. It was clearly argued. Mm -hmm. Then the Supreme Court read the Article 2 that says that they can give directions and orders whilst they are exercising their interpretive, their, their jurisdiction to interpret the Constitution. And that the jurisdiction to give the orders, even if those orders are directed to any other organ of state, the Constitution says that if that organ of state disobeys those orders, it constitutes a high crime. So that ruling was in respect of an issue that had been raised. It wasn't okay. as if the, the, the CJ or the Supreme Court, for that matter, just, you know, gave well, uh, part, threats. Part, part of okay. what was said was even some commentary. As, but you see, it's not so much about the subject, it's the form in which it came. I think that's where Professor Jampo raises the concern. Now, uh, uh, now, 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 can I make my yes, point? Make your point. No. Make your point. Now, when the Supreme Court you? says that... Uh, if if its orders are disobeyed by parliament, mm -hmm. um, it constitutes the president and the vice. Yes, mm -hmm. and that is Cannot. what the constitution says. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that yes, it constitutes high crime. Yes. So all the 275 members of parliament will go to trial. High crime too will have to be tried. Won't we be tried? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's such an unreasonable interpretation to reach. Why? Because it's not feasible. When Parliament decides to ignore this decision, nothing will happen. I'm telling you, nothing will happen. It's just that there will be chaos. Yes, but, but, but you understand. What, what, and I'm saying mm, that I've, I've just told you that if Parliament, if a member of Parliament decides today to cite the Registrar of the Supreme Court for their conduct on the Friday that the the, the expert decision was given, yeah. that the, the the conduct constitute contempt of Parliament, and so proceedings should be instituted. You, you think that there, there will be peace in this country? So I'm saying we must all be, we must be, you know, we, 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 we must be reasonable when we are reaching some decisions. And, and we must imbibe the spirit and letter of the Constitution in reaching some of these decisions. And I'm saying that the evidence that Apeno went to place before the court is that Speaker's decision has rendered them a minority. So Supreme Court make us majority again. Essentially, this is that what Dr. David is saying. And that the government of the day will be rendered unpopular. If this, this is pure, in fact, this is worse than a campaign, political campaign. And that the new majority will hold a lot of inquiries and, and, and it will render the, the government unpopular. Inquiries about what? Government's fictitious dealings. This is what the, the Apeno Maki, as leader of the MPP caucus, went to tell the court. And the court tilted it. 
And, and mm. you are saying that the NDC, the NDC group in parliament, the ma as majority now, we shouldn't resist it. We'll resist it. You'll resist it? We'll resist it. Ah, we'll mm. vote. You, you ah, will not vote. Parliament must take a decision to give effect to this. Who we'll vote? It's my right to vote. That's our vote. So, as Parliament is being recalled on November 7, yes. you will go? We will go. And, but who we'll vote? There will not be a decisional quorum. I, 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 I tell you. That one, mark, mark my words. I tell you, on the 7th, there will not be a decisional quorum. There may be a commencement quorum. There will not be a decisional quorum. So, nothing will happen on the 7th. So, the, the fundamental issue of who is majority has not been addressed. It has not been addressed. So, with the recall of parliament, where, where that, 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 that issue was still... We sit at a regular place. Which is for, what? For about two weeks now, we have a regular place we sit. That's what we sit. You see, we we'll, we'll have to sit there for a decision, for a resolution to be passed to reverse the effect of speaker's ruling. And that decision lies with parliament. It doesn't lie with speaker. That is the error the Supreme Court fell into. It is not the speaker that will make that decision. You mean it's not the Supreme Court that will make that decision? No, it is not the speaker mm -hmm. that will make that decision. It is the House. That's what I'm saying. They are failing to understand how Parliament functions. Parliament takes decisions by resolutions. And I say I won't participate in the resolution passing. It's my right to vote. I say I won't vote. If I don't vote, if all the NDC say we don't vote, there's no quorum to form a decision. So that's decision. what happened. That's why the speaker adjourned the House Senate. Yes. Here. So uh, the House will have to be adjourned again and it will continue to be adjourned. Once he doesn't have a quorum to make that decision, he will adjourn and he will continue. So this is the absurdity. This is the, this is the absurd consequences of what the Supreme Court has decided that everybody appears not to have seen. This is the absurd, and the Constitution does not encourage absurd consequences for his interpretation at all. There must be purpose to the interpretation. I am saying the ex parte application that came, and, and Bobby, you made a point, but you see, procedurally, when you go to a court, you must direct the court, the, 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 the orders on, yeah, yes, yes, no, not the relief. When you go to court, they will ask you, what is your authority? Hmm. So the authority must be indicated on the face of the motion paper. Yes. He did not. So the court now has to go and look for the law to support the application. <laughs> That's what will happen. The, you must say the ex parte application pursuant to order 19 so and so and so of CI 47. Mm -hmm. That's what you do on the face of the motion paper. Oh. There was. This is a Supreme Court. He's making salient points. We think that that one he allowed to whittle down his No, it is fatal. You don't go to the Supreme Court and ask the judges to look for the law. Oh, yeah, but they will correct you. So make your point. So, so. So, so I'm saying, maybe that, the Supreme Court has to look for the law to support the application. <laughs> okay. That too. Okay. They, they, pray for, they pray for a stay mm -hmm. pursuant to an ex party application. Right. Who shouldn't last for more than 10 days? Supreme Court granted it ad infinitum. So they, they did things for the applicants that ordinarily, that ordinarily, any other applicant would have been true. In fact, you will even last one second on your feet. They cracked his kennel for him. <laughs> you, you understand? <laughs> Times are so, so this matter is pure politics. And, I'm, and I've been saying it, that Supreme Court in any jurisdiction is a political organ. <laughs> First and foremost, before adjudicatory. And this Supreme Court has shown exactly that. So for me, anything that goes to the Supreme Court, it's, they, it has a political connotation for me. Every decision. We went okay. to court in respect of e levy Tax. It's not been, it's not been heard. It's not been determined. Till today, the matter is in abeyance. I see. I went to court 
Let me mm. tell you, I went. To, the president woke up 14th of February this year mm. and dismissed some number of ministers with the stroke of his pen. Right. Did, mentioned them, dismissed all of them. This is with immediate effect. So even some who were on their way to uh, to the office, they had to go back. <laughs> ah, one told mm. me. I see. You understand? So hold on. And then, with, with, with the same communication, decided to make fresh appointments and sought to reshuffle five of those that he says he has dismissed. Mm -hmm. So I said, no way. He has the power to even reappoint them. But that reappointment, that reshuffle cannot be a reshuffle because you have told the whole country that you've dismissed them with immediate effect. So the constitutional provision has come into effect, Article 79 or so. Mm -hmm. So they must be subject to parliamentary pre approval. I, I went to court to therefore stay the hand of parliament, not to vet the persons is brought. So the Supreme Court says, no, we can't stay the hand of parliament. So those ministers, as we speak, they are working. The irreparable, the irreparable damage that will suffer is that tomorrow when the decision is made, that the dismissal letter constitutes termination, and therefore any, any subsequent appointment of same people is subject to parliamentary approval constitutional provision. The decisions they would have made on behalf of the Republic, what will happen to them? So for you, the, the court declared it null and void? So the solution to this matter, in your view, doesn't lie with the court? No, it's, it's a political problem. So how, how that the court that be? cannot solve. This is not a problem that a court can resolve. And, and the Constitution is very clear on that. Unless, you see, the, the issues under 97-1, Constitution is clear how you can stay in parliament when, when you, you, you join another party. It says, notwithstanding paragraphs G of clause 1 of this article, a, a measure of parties at the national level sanctioned by the party's constitution or membership of a coalition government of which his original party forms part shall not affect the status of any member of parliament. So the constitution itself knows that you can switch sides. But if you switch sides in a measure, you stay in parliament. But when you switch sides, you have to leave. And the constitution says a member of parliament, then people are saying that it is, it is because it, is, they, it should be understood to be of, of a future effect. The constitution says a member of parliament. Go and check the definition of a member of parliament. A member of a, the current parliament. Right. Well, the, the speaker's verdict on this argument of whether or not this matter should have future consequence, the interpretation of this particular yeah. article yeah. should have future consequence. It says, quote, if Article 97.1 G and H were to apply only to future parliaments, they will be rendered superfluous. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or switched political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of this provision. They will start the next session aligned with their new party or as an independent. Thus, there will be no defection and the violation will be wiped clean. Thank you. Now, the constitution itself makes that provision and provides for this scenario. It says a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament upon a dissolution of parliament. So when parliament is dissolved, you are gone. You are no longer a member of parliament. Automaticity. Nothing is... Ah, so well, I should also go to court and say that, oh, parliament has been dissolved. I'm no longer a member of parliament, but I don't understand, so I need interpretation. This... Well, uh, you, you align with those who say that the language no, of... See, uh, 97 no, no, one is... It's not about... One AG, hold on. It's GNH. not about alignment. It's, it's clear in, in yeah, understanding. See, unless there the MPP is saying... No, the, the allegation that Cynthia Morrison has, uh, is running as an independent candidate is not true. The allegation that Kwejua Santi is running as an independent candidate in Suhum is not true. The allegation that uh, Formina, the independent member and the second deputy speaker of two parliament has joined the MPP is not true. Okay. Unless, you see, it is under these circumstances that you go to the Supreme Court to litigate this matter. But when the facts supporting the operation of this provision are, 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 are uncontroverted, then, then what, what exactly are you looking for? Okay.